Hello, everyone, and welcome to I Can't Believe That Happened, a history podcast for kids and curious adults. So I have been like trying to think of what I was going to do, and I had really planned on doing an entire season of the circus, and then I found out the PBS show did a way better job than I could ever do. So may I please recommend going over to PBS and watching their A History of a Circus. It is looking fantastic, and I can tell you I will be binging that like crazy. Um, I might actually put up a few things that they didn't cover just so that you guys can see it. But honestly, my attention span is not really long enough to do a season of anything. So I'm going to hope you forgive me for like switching things up because I have gotten so interested in so many things and I don't want to just um, not tell you guys about them because it's um, it's all just so fascinating and I get really excited about things and I want to share them with all of you. So I want to share with you one of my favorite people who has ever existed and I take so much strength and hope from her that I hope you're going to really enjoy the story as well. Because sometimes when you're a kid and sometimes when you're disabled or sometimes when you just don't feel like you have a voice, it's really easy to feel like you can't change things that are important that you really want to have changed. And this woman is one of my favorite people for changing things. And believe me, we are going to be covering a lot of men and women and children who have seen things that they don't like and have really pushed forward and made their voices heard. And I can't think of a more important or interesting group of people to talk about. Um, I really want to talk to you guys about Nellie Blythe. She is um, one of my personal heroes for so many reasons. And partly, I have a real wide mischievous streak. So I love anyone who has a real mischievous, fun, playful streak. And she really did. And I promise you we're going to talk about her later. If for no other reason, then we're going to talk about her little jaunt around the world in 80 days. We have to talk about that and it will happen. But I want to talk to you guys about one of the things that made her very, very famous when she was, and I know if you're a kid listening to this, 23 does not sound that young. I am not 23. And it sounds really young to me for someone who really changed an entire Um, Industry is probably the wrong word, but an entire way of doing things for people who were not able to ask for more. So I want to talk to you guys about Nellie Bly. Um, So there were some people who really cannot abide cruelty or injustice in the world and will do literally anything to make things right. At a time where women were really struggling for basic rights, and I mean all women, um, women of any social class, women of any race, of any abilities. There was no women that were allowed to actually vote. Um, The ability to hold property in your name was almost and virtually impossible, even until the 1970s. If you are a child, please feel free to ask your grandmother about how hard it was to even get a credit card in the 1970s. So keep in mind that when I'm talking about what it was like to be a woman in 1880s, it was not really a, um, a place where you would think that this person holds a lot of power and an ability to make people stop and listen. So Nellie really could not stand to see injustice, and she took the only power she really had, which was that she was a writer and a journalist. And she decided to take on institutions that housed those that were not mentally well. She was very, very concerned about the treatment of those who were not mentally stable. And she undoubtedly had read some of the works of um, of other writers and even novelists who had written about the, um, the conditions for places that housed those who were not mentally stable and was very upset and wanted to do something to make it better. She actually said, and this is her quote from her book, that such an institution could be managed, could be mismanaged, so sorry, everyone, and that cruelties could exist beneath the roof I did not deem possible. I always had a desire to know asylum life more thoroughly, a desire to be convinced that the most helpless of God's creatures, the insane, were cared for kindly and properly. Okay, so those were her words. We don't use the word insane really anymore. Um... But it really shows you that she was not willing to just take what other people wrote and that she was going to create action off of what 
She had known about only secondhand, which means that she had gotten the information from someone else. She wanted to experience it firsthand, which means that she would actually experience that life. So if you take a minute and understand what I am saying, what I am saying is she was actually going to go into a mental asylum and experience it herself as someone who had her full mental capacities so that she could use her own voice and tell everyone exactly what that was like. Now, she was a writer for the New York world in the late 1800s, and she actually made the decision to have herself committed to Blackwell Island Asylum. Now, this was not known to be a nice place, and I won't give you the full details. If you are old enough, please feel free to look up what this place was like in the 1880s. It is now renamed as Roosevelt's Island, um, but at that time, it was a place to house those who are not mentally stable. She was only 23 years old. <laughs> I just kind of want to like underline this because sometimes when you're a kid, you're not really sure if your voice can be heard. And if you're a teenager and you're hearing this sometimes, and especially before we had a whole bunch of teenagers who got really good at using their voice and their words, it really just kind of seemed like an uphill battle just to hear your voice said. Um, I will tell you right now, as a thorough blown adult and everyone keeps trying to convince me I am one it really doesn't get easier to make sure your voice gets heard this is really a block that we put in front of ourselves and Nellie really understood that because um she decided that she was going to go completely into this story and she got her editor's approval and she decided to go completely undercover so she disguised herself um, as a woman with the last name of Morano or Moreno and pretended to be an immigrant who had um, very limited um, capacity for sanity. <laughs> and she got herself into a boarding house and she said that she just let everything fly and she yelled and screamed and did everything she'd ever thought of doing before. She actually was quoted as saying it was tremendous fun. Um, she then walked around the streets of New York acting very similarly where she was taken to court by the police and after being bounced around to different courts was sent over to the asylum. Um, she was the one of the first people to ever go undercover and definitely one of the first to go undercover in an asylum. And she did this so that she could give a voice to those who absolutely did not have a voice. A lot of the people at the asylum would actually spend the rest of their lives there. The article she wrote about her firsthand experience was printed as Behind the Asylum Bars. If you would like to actually look a little closer at this, I kind of recommend that you're a little older if you really want to read the details. They are not um, scary. I am sanitizing this quite a bit. And like I've always said in this podcast, history does not exist to make me feel comfortable. Um, if you would actually like to go back and look at some of this and research it for yourself, it is um, better known as 10 Days in a Madhouse. This was so popular that it actually ran out of print. Um, it ended up being something that she ended up um, being asked to write a book, and she did. She wrote a book, so it's now, um, I don't know if it's still in print, but it's very easy to find. I found it on iBooks for 99 cents, and that actually included all of her books. And if you're a younger reader, and this is a little too scary for you to read all the way through, I would really like to recommend her book on 80 Days Around the World. That was really fun to read, and I swear I'll do an episode on it soon. So while she was in her madhouse, she said that the most disturbing thing for her was that she dropped the act. She didn't act like Murano anymore. She acted like herself, and she spoke as herself, which was... Um, really frightening to her because the more like herself she acted and the more reasonable she acted, the more she was treated like she was crazy. A reporter who was there for a separate story and undercover himself recognized her. And even though she could have left and even left with a really good story, she didn't feel like she was done. She felt like there was more that she needed to learn. And she asked him not to blow her cover. She chose to stay behind the walls of the asylum to get the story she needed to get. And he honored that. It actually took the attorney for the newspaper to come in to get her out of the asylum. So that was um, a level of commitment and bravery. I, I don't even know if I wish I had. I'm just so in awe of. That's amazing to me. She, um, <laughs> she actually did a lot here. This wasn't just something that made her popular. It did. 
This story put her on the map. She became incredibly famous. But that wasn't what was important to her. Here's what's important to her. The Committee of Appropriations, after this story and after a huge public outcry, decided that they were going to put a million dollars more to those with mental impairments. Now, a million sounds like a lot. I get that. I want you to think about what a million dollars would be like in the 1880s. That was an extreme amount of money. Now, she didn't just write this, be proud that the money came in. She decides she needed to see it again for herself. Um, This commitment, I think, is really important whenever you try to change things. Even when it looks like it's changed, it's always important to revisit it and make sure that things are still going well. So after a month, she went back to Blackwell with a grand jury panel, and a lot of what she saw had been corrected. Um, The food and sanitation had improved greatly, and the cruel um, people who had worked there were removed and gone. Like I said, I could do an entire season about her. I swear I will bring her back. Um, And uh, if nothing else, I'm not kidding. Her story about going around the world in 80 days that is epic. I promise it'll be back. I don't know when, but I, I really want to read the book myself anyway, and I know the story very well. I'm really excited to talk about it. Um, but this is a story of a person who didn't even have the right to vote and really couldn't do a lot of anything legally in her, her space. Um, she lived from 1864 until 1922, and she really decided that she could change an entire institution with only her bravery and her words. She didn't have social media to get the message out. Um, I really want to just like underline all of this. The tools that all of us have at our fingertips are things that Nellie Bly did not have. And she was still able to change an entire institution that felt immovable, that felt like it could never change. And she did it. Um, she was just a person who lived for purpose and possibility and adventure and causes. And just reading her story, it's, um, it's made me feel a lot brighter on a kind of dark day. And it's made me feel like a lot more is possible. I hope this helped you feel that way too. I know it's hard to feel like you don't have power or a voice and that's really hard. I know, especially when you're a kid. Um, but I hope this helps you feel like Like, there is ways to do things, and there are ways to be heard. So I hope you guys have a great week. Please remember, we are a newborn little baby podcast, still trying to figure out ourselves. If you are part of a homeschool group, or if um, you have a teacher or friends that you could share with, if you ask your mom to maybe share, or your dad, or anyone who's around who's a guardian to please share to their group we kind of survive based on you guys talking about us and saying that you like to hear these history stories um if you have corrections please be nice please feel free to email me or to message me i am really happy to hear what you have to say if you have suggestions for future podcast please go onto our patreon account um and I think we have a a $5 or a $3 a month thing that you can do and you can give me suggestions and you can ask me questions. So thank you so much. I really appreciate you being here. Please share us and have a wonderful week. I will hopefully be back next week. I am very sick, so I um, I will do my best, I promise.